So welcome back to Dino's Garage for the VN900 Custom. Um, you may have noticed a few differences by now. The bike is coming along nicely. Um, I left really with uh, the night sort of drawing in as it is again this evening after work. Um, but it is coming along nicely now. The bike's looking a lot better than it did before. But there is something that I do want to change today. And I've bought the first present the VN900 Custom and that is to get rid of this mainly this because this is pretty comfortable but bulky let's be honest doesn't look that great very comfortable but yeah um, so what do we got let's go and have a look right so here it is this is what I've got um, massive giant piece of bubble wrap in fragile tape perfect um, well actually it is around about sort of uh, I don't know 10 kilos of uh, lovely bubble wrap and fragile tape and within it is the what should be the standard seat um, this weighs about 25 to 30 kilos this should be much nicer looking and only weighs about I don't know 10 kilos so let's get this unpacked now and hopefully it is undamaged it is an eBay purchase hopefully it's as going to be as good as it looked when I purchased it and we'll get it on a bike and see how it looks with this on and this big beast off right so let's get this off now simple as that now with the seat on the VN900 custom and I guess it's the same for any sort of latter sort of VN900 or even 800 um, the seat has this arrangement basically it's a bracket with these two pins and basically what happens is these two pins locate on top of the fender into the locking mechanism now this bracket on here has to come off and go on to the other seat because it doesn't have this bracket with it so I'm just going to unbolt this now take it off stick it on the other seat and then we should be able to just click it straight into place and see how it looks so the bracket is simply held on by two slightly odd if you like 11 mil headed bolts or at least in this case with this seat that's what they were 11 mil and it just comes straight off of there it does have a couple of plastic spaces to uh, bring it up at, to the desired height now, I may not need those spaces on the other seat um, if you notice I am doing this on the two cushions that I normally use for kneeling on when I'm working on the bike just so you don't scuff or damage the seat because on here there's very stony tarmac you, you move or scuff this in any way you're going to damage this seat so you don't want to do that so what I am going to do is I'm going to take the seat and the bracket the bracket straight off the, the uh, other seat the uh, Mustang seat and this bracket will go directly onto here now there are a couple of bolts already in this seat that come up through the underside so I need a couple of nuts to wind that on and then it should go straight onto the bike there. Actually the studs coming out of the uh, replacement seat are actually 6mm studs so yeah I was lucky enough to find in my bits and bobs in the garage there I never throw anything away especially when it comes to little washers and nuts and bolts that don't take up any space so why would you? Um, so yeah I have got some spare washers and nuts that I'm just going to tighten on here and hopefully the bracket is good as it is and it will click in and fit straight away. Right so here goes let's hope it just fits in and clicks in straight away without any other adjustment but we'll see. So that plastic bit just slides straight in underneath there and in theory oh. 
that appears to be it as simple as that um, just undoing the plate putting it back on this saddle and there it is let's have a look let's just bring the camera up and have a look just that section there the way it goes over the top of the fender there sorry about the light it's actually a lot darker to me than it is to the camera just love the way that sits tightly to the fender and especially with the uh, the, the stripe line through this bike and the way this this bit here sits dead in the center line just changes the stance and the look of the bike straight away cleans up the lines really beginning to take shape now really beginning to sort of get there and look the bike that it deserves to look like so we'll be back tomorrow we'll do a little bit more polishing and cleaning still a fair bit to do right so having sorted out a few things on the vn we need to really get looking at servicing of the bike so i have bought some oil and i have bought an oil filter and we will drop the oil once it's warmed up um, and do that another day but uh, one thing I do want to look at is the air filter and make sure that that's clean and good and not you know something that hasn't been changed for a long time so let's get in undo these bolts now and see what that's like so four bolts have been undone we can just remove this and there we are that's our air filter there now this should just pop out actually we've got a, a retainer there just holding it in at the top that's it that's the air filter does look like that screw comes with it but um, actually it just pops out so you need to make sure you keep that so we'll just pop that back in there for now so it stays safe and out of the way now on the outside the filter looks pretty clean but when we look on the inside the bit that's actually breathing in and sucking all of the air in because what happens is the air comes up through and then the clean air comes through the filter gets sucked in here through into the injection system so this is the clean inner part this is the dirty external part and we can see on here there's cobwebs and dead flies and dead spiders and whatever so yeah it doesn't look too clean must confess now you can buy new filters and obviously it's always a good idea to buy new filters but you can let's just have a look at this a little bit closer you can see in here all sorts of bits of leaf and stuff now you can clean these out in the meantime obviously until your new filter comes just get a hoover in here suck out all the dead leaves and you know bits of stuff that's stopping the bike from breathing so well um, and to some degree you know you can clean this up um, you can actually really clean a filter pretty well now this is a K&N filter so this is actually a, a decent filter that's been bought to go with the Vance and Hein pipes and to also go with the power commander 
So this particular filter is something I'm not going to discard and throw away. I'm actually going to clean this out, suck it all out, get some hot water on it and then let it dry out and then put it back on the bike once it's fully dry. Um, but like I say, this is a decent proper K&N. The other ones are more sort of throw away type products. You'll probably find that this is rigid, cheap plastic on a, a normal Kawasaki and it will look very similar to this but it will be a lot sort of simpler, easier, more of a throwaway type item and normally a filter for a Kawasaki like this would probably cost you around about 12 to 20 pounds depending on where you buy it from. So I'm going to clean this out now and let it dry out and then put it back on the bike later. But if you don't do these things which is what five bolts to undo to check this out you wouldn't know how bad this is and this does need really good cleaning out and that will help it to breathe and, and work that much better and give us a bit more fuel economy of course and a little bit more speed inside it all looks good um, nothing too bad to worry about you know it should be dusty in whatever inside because this is where the air comes in from and um, you may even find you know some dead leaves and stuff in this bit always remember just to give this a clean out if it does look particularly bad give it a hoover out um, but yeah other than that fine the breather incidentally comes up and goes here and there's a little bit of oil residue in this bit but this is where the the breather from the actual engine comes up into this section here and that's all quite normal so if you see a little bit of oil in here that's quite normal And that's it really all looks good all looks fine incidentally if I ever want to spray this part and clean these fins then obviously I would undo these bolts and undo this section and undo these clamps etc and take this plastic housing off of here along with that breather that runs up underneath there somewhere take that off and then I've got the two cylinder cases exposed and then if you want to clean them spray them do whatever which I probably will do at some point then that's what I'll need to do is remove this completely. So, as I say, with the K&N type filter, this is a reusable filter, and like I say, it's filthy dirty inside. So what we're going to do is take some washing up liquid and some hot soapy water, drop it in the bucket there, and I'm going to put this washing up liquid on the outer side. The reason is I want it to sort of penetrate through and, and, and sort of get the gunk out on the inside. Now this is a relatively soft brush I'm using. I don't want to use something too harsh to sort of that won't damage the actual paper filter on the inside. Although it's covered in the gauze, you still don't want something that's too harsh. So this was nice clean water, we'll see what the water looks like once we finish cleaning this filter and it'll give us a good idea of just how dirty it was. As you can see I'm going up and down because I'm, I'm basically getting the water to come through the filter. Now if I did want to put this back in the bike pretty quickly, there's two things I could do once I rinse this out. One, I could use a hair dryer to obviously blow warm air through the filter, which will push all of the moisture out and dry it out at the same time. That's one good way. Um, the other thing I have just recently invested in is a hot air um, motorcycle blower dryer, um, which is basically a big giant hair dryer. Um, and it's got quite a high powered motor on it which also blasts the uh, moisture out of here. I'm going to rinse it off now with a hose and just make sure I blast through and get any sort of debris that might be hidden between these fins out completely and then it's all clean. So that is the air filter now all cleaned through. Uh, that is the inside that had all of the leaves and dead bugs and everything in it and you can see the daylight shining through 
behind there or the sort of white bucket and the foam of the bucket just coming through and I'm now going to dry this through with a hair dryer which will blast out any remaining water so that is it that is the filter all cleaned and dried flush through after I cleaned it with soapy water with a high pressure hose and cleaned out any of the sort of soapy residue and blasted through and got rid of any more litter um, sort of debris in there um, I then basically got a nice decent blast of a hot air dryer and blasted through any more water that was still within here and got it really hot you could really feel the, the, the metal mesh heating up um, made sure there was no more moisture left in there at all like I say blasted it through for quite some time held it up to the light and then made sure that basically everything was clear picked out any little things with a bit of fine wire uh, there was just a couple of places where there was still some caught between these fins now that's done I can undo this bolt we already know it's pretty clean here so this will just basically go straight back in and let me just remind you this is a K and N filter not an ordinary paper filter so this is the type of filter that you can clean through and flush out and reuse and, and this is because this particular bike has got the Vance and Heinz pipes and the Power Commander set up so it's been tuned to have this air filter and the pipes etc with the Power Commander um, and that's it tighten this bolt up put the casing on tighten that up and that is the air filter done that's it air filter cleaned and put back on sorted right so I spent a bit of time this morning and that's the front wheel sorted out all done with T cut it's not completely finished but you know I have T cutted it and sort of got the worst of that um, sort of whiting effect out of it um, to be honest it now looks no, pretty good pretty good there's no flaking paint on that wheel at all it was just where you have that kind of textured finish uh, towards not on the face of the spokes but towards the sort of hub it, it tended to be sort of whiter in color um, yeah just where paint was not polished for such a long time so anyway that's that front wheel now looking pretty good um, next up is to try and do something about the exhaust now it may well be that we'll resort to um, spraying the exhaust pipe a nice satin black but for now I just want to see whether I can do something about that discoloration so um, yeah I'll grab the teacup and something else and see if I can get rid of that now so what I'm going to use first is some stain go now this is basically a slightly abrasive cream UPVC but what it can do is remove the first sort of base layer of paint and any sort of staining of it that's what I want to see whether that works Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like that's come up really nice. Now it is a sort of grey in colour rather than a black. But I think these pipes always were originally more of a grey than a dark black. Um, which is not a bad thing because it kind of matches the frame anyway. Um, but yeah, that looks like that's going to work. So I'm just going to carry on. Let this stain go. So look at the difference there now. That's just 
a quick going over with stain go and it's taken all of that sort of tarnishing look that sort of rusty tarnishing look out of this pipe cover under here incidentally is the original chrome not the original chrome it's the Vance and Heinz chrome pipe and this is just the black shield on top but that stain goes taken that straight off and then what we can do is we can follow up with the black tea cut so the stain go is quite abrasive and that's taken off you know a thin layer of paint tea cut to some degree will take off some paint but not as much as the stain go and of course the stain goes white and this is black so any little scratches and things in the paintwork this will help to sort of sit in and fill in any little imperfections in the paintwork But that's just a couple of minutes and what a difference what an absolute difference that is from that to that brilliant which basically means i don't have to respray it just means i've got to just use these types of things incidentally this stain go i'm not trying to advertise stain go i've had this now for oh i don't know 10 years plus um this stain go was what I also used in the YZF750 Miracle video where we um, worked on the white plastic wing mirrors and even the screen. It cuts back old sort of, let's say, dead layer plastic. Imagine plastics being like skin. You're exfoliating basically the first layer getting rid of all of the, the green and the grime and you're cutting back to the good plastic you're literally exfoliating layers of plastic which is not unlike this you're exfoliating layers of paint and then coming back down to what's good paint so let's just see that again in action up close on this pipe stain go Let's show you on this bit, I can see, probably not so much on camera, but I can see this is almost browning in sort of colour here. Let's just see how well this comes up. And that's pretty much now all of that brown stained look gone. Follow it up with some black tea cut. Then I'll help remove the white of the stain go as well. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll keep on polishing and get her looking as best as we possibly can. Thanks for watching Dino's Garage and the VN900 Custom.